That's Vintage Vinyl in Forge, New Jersey. I just went in for my final visit ever, so let's see what I got. Greetings, y'all. Today we are doing a little bit of a sad episode, or at the same time a little bit of a celebratory episode. Uh, about a week ago, I uh, noticed a post on social media somewhere that uh, Vintage Vinyl in Fords, New Jersey had decided to close up shop. Uh, they've been there since 1979. You instantly thought that it was because of COVID that they were closing down and sales were terrible or whatever. But uh, it was actually that the owners, you know, they've been there in business for 40 some odd years and just decided that it was time to retire. They had earned it, and it was time to kind of head off into the sunset. I guess they have like grandkids now and everything, and they want to spend a little more time with the uh, family. And, you know, good for them. They deserve it. You know, it's sad that the store is going to be gone. Um, I'd go there every now and then. It's a bit of a haul for me, but I'd still, you know, visit it every uh, couple of years and uh, always found some good stuff there. They usually have a really good selection. They used to have a lot of like in store appearances and stuff. Uh, different bands. I know one of my favorite bands, Sahara Hot Nights, played there. Feelies, Cheap Trick, all these different bands had uh, graced their stage there for in-store appearances. So it's kind of sad to see them go. Like, it's sad to see any record store go, but at least, you know, on a positive note, they're sort of leaving on their terms. So, uh, so when I saw that, I decided to, uh, I called up my buddy Owen the Giant, and we took one last visit up there. They were having a sale to get rid of stuff, 30% off everything in the store. UCDs were like, buy two, get one free. I really was hoping to get like a t-shirt, um, but they were all long gone, so didn't luck out on that. But uh, picked up some cool stuff and uh, let's see. From 2013, we got Rilo Kylie and Archive, spelled R-K-I-V-E-S, clever Rilo Kylie. Um, this is a compilation after the band had split up uh, that they put out, just kind of like some B-sides, unreleased stuff, whatever's laying around, and uh, put this out. Um, I really like Rilo Kylie. I got into them, I guess, when they put out their album More Adventurous, I heard. Uh, some tunes from that and picked it up and then subsequently picked up their older stuff and really liked it. Um, saw them live a few times, saw Jenny Lewis live once, I, th I think up in Ithaca, New York. Um, really good band. It's a shame they kind of called it a day, but there's a good collection of material there by them. Um, and I had never picked this one up for whatever reason and finally decided to grab it there. And it's really good. There's some really good tracks on here. Some of them I'd heard before, but uh, it's good to have this collection finally in my collection. Um, some of the tracks on here that I uh, really dig were It'll Get You There was cool, Running Around I really liked, I Remember You, and also The Frug, which that one I'd heard a long time ago um, and had it somewhere, just a digital track, but now I got it on the CD here. I think that might have been from a film, or maybe it was on their, uh, they put out that EP uh, uh, way back, like maybe originally, The Initial Friend. It might be on that, uh, but I think it was also in a film. But uh, like I said, I'm glad I finally got this one in the collection. When I saw it there, I knew I was destined to finally pick it up. From 1996, we get self-titled Rainer Marie CD. This is, uh, I guess it's an EP. There's six tracks on here. Um, and... Uh, it's a little, it's weird, because this almost feels like it was like, it's put out by Polyvinyl, but like the booklet, there's like nothing in it. It's just, it almost feels like somebody printed this out on their computer. It's just blank. It's just on this thin paper. But I mean, the CD is legit and everything looks legit. Um, but I thought at first maybe this was like a promo copy or something like that. Um, but it doesn't appear to be, although it does have like contact information for the band, like an address, but that might be just sort of like a mailing address for kind of fan mail or whatever. But I first uh, heard a tune by them back in early 2000s, I guess is when I heard it, is a song called Artificial Light, which I really, really liked. And, uh, and I don't own any, I thought I had a CD by them, but I don't believe I have anything by them like a CD. I have some couple of tracks. 
So when I saw this, uh, it was cheap. It was like maybe $2 or something like that. I decided to pick it up and they're kind of like alt rock, kind of college rock. There's like kind of like maybe a punk element to it, like kind of noise, you know, and uh, um, some of the other stuff I've heard by them, I really kind of dig. This, eh, I wasn't crazy about it. It's okay. I mean, I'm, all these things I've only really given a listen to once, except some of the stuff that I've, uh, you'll see that I've had before. But I think I got to give this another couple listens to really kind of make my judgment on this. But on my first listen, nothing really was standing out to me. Uh, so I got to give this another listen. So um, we'll make up my mind at a later date, I guess. 2011, we get Telekinesis, 12 Desperate Straight Lines. And all my CDs are still kind of boxed up. I have an app that tells me everything I have, but I don't know why, for some reason, I could swear I bought this before. And when I dig through my CDs or finally set them back up in shelves, I just know that I'm gonna find a copy of this in there. I don't know why. It, it's not bizarre for me to, I, I know once or twice in the past I have uh, forgotten to, you know, scan something into the app, but so it's in that catalog, but I don't know why, just for some reason I feel like I did buy this once before, but it was cheap, this is used, I bought it, it was maybe two or three bucks up there, so worst case scenario, if I do have it, it's not like I, uh, you know, wasted a ton of money. Uh, but I first heard uh, the tune on here, Car Crash, around when this came out, 2011 or 12 or something like that, is when I heard it. Um, and a really good um, tune. I think I might have got it from like a sampler, like a record label sampler or something like that. They're on Merge. I know Merge, you'd be able to kind of pick up samplers from them every now and then. Um, so it's possible that's where I heard it. But uh, I saw this there and I grabbed it, like I said, Maybe I already bought it, but uh, it's a really good record. I really like this um, album. Some of the tracks on here that I dig are You Turn Clear in the Sun, obviously Car Crash, like I mentioned. Country Lane is another one that I remember hearing back in the day that's really good. And the last track, Gotta Get It Right Now, I really liked. But uh, all in all, a really good uh, purchase if I don't already have it. <laughs> but uh, it's a good album, really worth uh, checking out. From 2009, self-titled Telekinesis. I found this one first before 12 Desperate Straight Lines uh, used in the used bin again, and I was like, and I remembered Telekinesis, the name of the band from Car Crash, so I was like, oh, let me pick it up, you know? I don't really know too much by that band, so let me see uh, what this is, sounds like. and. Uh, and then I found 12 Desperate and grabbed it, but uh, but really good. I really like this one too. You know, it's, I don't know how to describe it. You know, alternative rock, I guess, is the simplest way to kind of sum it up. But uh, another really good uh, uh, record by uh, Telekinesis. Uh, some of the tracks on here I dug were Coast of Carolina, Tokyo, Great Lakes, Look to the East, All of a Sudden, Rust, Calling All Doctors it was good. It's kind of weird. There's like these kind of almost like all these destination titles, sort of, Carolina, Tokyo, Look to the East, Great Lakes, Farm Room. I don't know if there's some kind of theme going through this or not, but, uh, you know, again, really good. I'll have to maybe look into a little more of their discography because uh, these two records are really, really good. I'd be curious to hear maybe some other stuff, maybe some newer stuff. I'm imagining they're still around making records, but who knows, maybe they're not. From 1989, Hoodoo Gurus, Magnum Cum Laude. Great record. I had this on CD back in the day. Got it from one of those um, record clubs. I, I knew the band. My brother was uh, into them. And when this album came out, or when it was available in one of those record uh, clubs, I know I picked it up on CD and really loved it. One of my uh, favorite albums. When I did my favorite albums, I'm surprised I didn't... Did I put this on that list? I don't even remember. If I didn't, I should have, uh, in, in reference to my uh, four top 20 of all time album uh, videos that you can go watch now if you like, or finish watching this one, then go watch it. But uh, I've been looking for this on vinyl for a while now, and uh, I saw it there at Vintage Vinyl, and uh, I don't remember what it ended up being with the 30% off. It's used, but with the 30% off, I think I got it for eight or nine bucks, which not bad, you know, um, and it's a cutout, which kind of bums me out, but 
you know, and it, it, a couple of years ago that I probably would have passed on that, but now I kind of don't care that much. It's in really good condition otherwise. All the tra I mean, this whole album I love. It's, it's regular vinyl here. Um, let me put this up here for a minute. Uh, some of the tracks on here, Come Any Time, Another World, those were kind of like singles. Uh, Axe Grinder, All the Ways, really good. Should have been a single if it wasn't. Baby Can Dance, kind of a little slower tune. It's really good. Where's That Hit, Death in the Afternoon. Really good uh, record. I think it's got some stuff in there. No lyrics, just kind of all the info. Um, but just a great, great record. And then after this, they kind of, like I got, when I got this, I got really into them and picked up some of their earlier stuff. Um, but then the records after this kind of just, they weren't as good, like, I don't know, I was a little disappointed with some of them. There'd be, like, a couple of tracks that were okay, like, two or three songs that were that were pretty good, but um, but then the rest of it I was kind of lukewarm on, I don't know. But uh, I know, I don't know if they put out a new record just recently or they're working on a new record recently, but I don't know, I'd be curious to kind of check out something new by them, see what it sounds like, but good, good record, Hoodoo Gurus should really... Uh, dig into some of their stuff, this is a great place to start. 2003, we get the ponies laced with romance. Um, back when I worked at Broadway Video in like the mid 2000s, a friend of mine I worked with there gave me a copy that's like a burned copy. And uh, it's like kind of punk music, I guess you'd call it. Um, and I really liked it and just never, sometimes, you know, if I really liked the record, I would go and buy like an actual physical copy of my own, but just never really got around to it. I think, I don't think they're around anymore. I think they split up ultimately. Uh, maybe had like two more records or something like that. But when I saw this there uh, and it was in the used section, I got it really cheap or maybe for free um, and uh, decided to grab it. And uh, it's really good. I, I hadn't listened to this in probably what, 15 years or something like that. I don't think I've listened to it since, you know, back then, mid 2000s or whatever, but uh, but it reminded me how much I really like this. Uh, some of the tracks on here I dig are Let's Kill Ourselves, 10 Fingers, 11 Toes is another good one, Trouble Troubles, good, Chemical Imbalance I really liked. So yeah, I wanna, you know, give it a few more listens, maybe, uh, Maybe dig up uh, their next record. I'm pretty sure this is, I think this is their debut. So maybe I'll pick up the next record and see what that sounds like. 2010, we get Ra Ra Riot and The Orchard. And here is the blunder of the week or whatever you wanna call it. I bought this when it came out. The previous record to this, The Rum Line, uh, I love that record. Saw them live a couple of times supporting that record. Thought it was great. Recently, if you saw my video when I was in Alaska at Obsession Records, you'll see I bought the four, or 40th, 10th anniversary on the vinyl of that. Um, and I had this when it came out and I was really disappointed. I really didn't like it. Like, I don't think there was a single song on here that really caught my ear. I was so disappointed with it. And then I just kind of, I got rid of it. I sold it. I kind of forgot about the band. I'd hear like a single here and there that were okay. Um, sounded like they were kind of starting to lean a little more towards kind of pop or dance-ish kind of sound. Um, you know, they're alt-rock, college rock. You know, after the rum line, it just kind of fell apart for me. And so I saw this in there, and I've always kind of like wanted to go back to this and just kind of listen just to kind of see if maybe some time has changed my attitude towards this album. So I saw it there, and again, it was either two or three bucks, or I got it free, depending on, you know, how they rung it up. Uh, I just decided to grab it. And it was weird that it was there because I had been thinking about this recently of like, yeah, maybe I need to give it another shot. So I listened to it and I still am not crazy about it. Still is just, I don't know, it just doesn't, nothing really jumps out at me, catches my ear. I mean, the only track on here that I could really say that I kind of think's okay is too dramatic, but the rest of it just, I don't know, it's its, it's weird, you know? I, I, I'll give it another one or two more listens before I kind of write it off, even though I wrote it off once before. But uh, like I said, I, you could be going like, well, why did you buy this again, man? What the hell are you thinking? But 
I just wanted to give a, give it another shot. 1988, we get the Adolescence and Balboa Fun Zone. And I got a couple of CDs by the Adolescents. Of course, their first uh, self-titled one, which is like a classic, you know, punk band. Uh, Steve Soto, who passed away a few years ago, unfortunately. I got to see them live in Austin, Texas at the Fun 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 Fest, back when those were going on. It's good, you know, I mean, it's, it's what you expect from the Adolescents, some, you know, fast punk, kind of hardcore kind of sounds. Um, uh, but it, it, it's pretty good. I, I like them, you know. I mean, it, nothing touches their debut, but there's still some really good tunes on here, uh, you know, that uh, are worth checking out. Some of the tunes that I like myself were Just Like Before. They do a cover of Instant Karma, which is good, but nothing uh, out of the ordinary. Genius and Pain. It's Tattoo Time I liked a lot, except I wasn't crazy about the chorus, but the song is really good. And then there's uh, three, I guess, three bonus tracks on the back of this that aren't listed here. And the one that I really dug was uh, called Runaway, um, which is funny. Like, they're not listed on here as bonus tracks, but when you put it in the CD, you're like, hey, you know, there's 15 songs on here, not 12. But, uh, you know, cool pickup. Always interested to hear some other uh, stuff by the adolescents. From 1985, we get the Rave Ups and Town Plus Country, Town and Country. Uh, kind of new wave, kind of rockabilly, country kind of twang to them. This was put out by Omnivore. This is a reissue with a bunch of bonus stuff, some live tracks, some demos, and stuff like that. Uh, my uh, familiarity <laughs> with this band was from, they were in the Pretty in Pink movie. Uh, they played, I guess, two tunes in that. I think they played Positively Lost Me, and then they played uh, Rave Up, Shut Up. Uh, I guess they're in like a bar scene or something. They're the band playing uh, in the movie, in the scene. Um, but yeah, again, I saw this there. It's really good, really good record. It started off a little slow for me, but then it kind of kind of picked up and I started really digging it. Um, some of the tracks on here I like, Positively Lost Me, Class Tramp. In My Gremlin, You Ain't Going Nowhere was good, obviously Rave Up. They do a cover of If I Had a Hammer. Train to Nowhere, See You is also a bonus track. Please Take Her, She's Mine, it's like another uh, bonus track that I really liked. But uh, good good pickup, I really like this one. I love picking up some of these like early 80s or mid 80s kind of new wave-ish kind of uh, records because I really wasn't listening to that so much back then but uh, I've gotten really into it and the book's got a bunch of uh, you know nice liner notes I just haven't really delved into reading them just yet and finally from 1988 we get the final studio record by the talking heads naked and if you've watched any of these videos I've been doing or been keeping track of them, you know that I've been picking up the Talking Heads studio records as I go along. I've had Sand in the Vaseline, that collection, for a long time, and just slowly I've been picking up the studio albums as I find them in uh, some of these stores. This was used, got it pretty cheap. Um, good record, you know, uh, Talking Heads, can't really go wrong. They put out some great music. Uh, it's a shame that doesn't seem like they'll ever kind of reunite, but uh, if they did and they played a tour, I would love to go see them live. That would be a great show, I would imagine, but like I said, this is their final record. Some great songs on here, Blind, Mr. Jones, Totally Nude, Nothing But Flowers is an awesome track, uh, Big Daddy's really good, so... You know, always good to pick up some talking heads. And that's it. That's it for uh, Vintage Vinyl. Sad to see them go, like I said, but it's happy that, you know, the owners are kind of going out their own way on their decision. You know, COVID didn't sort of force them to close up shop. Uh, but it's sad to see another record store uh, go under. Um, if you're familiar with Vintage Vinyl, it'd be great to hear any kind of stories from visits there or if you saw any live in store performances perhaps um and by all means like always please you know let me know what you think of these records or any tracks you dig from them or maybe some tracks you hate from them <laughs> but uh thanks for watching again and we'll see you next time <laughs>